Okay. Talk about it. Nidhi, I'm here. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> landscapes of the digital through the lens of disability i mean we've had enough of the able bodied gaze or looking at disability from an able bodied lens so the millennial essentially taught me how to survive i found my purpose in the world as a disabled queer person why do one always gets a feeling of not being treated as an equal they don't every time you're made to feel Over or sorry about taking care. We ask persons with how do you experience the digital? I learn a lot on social media and you know the digital space because it cuts the anxiety of having to meet people in real life. And I can as I can go back and add an afterthought, but I can't do it in a live space, but I have that freedom. So I am a much productive thoughtful and better version of myself as a digital being that I am in person one of the digital spaces which i really enjoy is um, google sheets uh, and i think that's a really amazing way to collaborate it's a great way to build community it's a great way to get in uh, get your ideas down in a creative way uh, online medium se main kafi logo tak apni story aur disability ke bare mein apne classmates ko सेंसिटाइज कर पाया फेसबुक के माध्यम से आई कीप शेयरिंग ओवर सोशल मीडिया सो आई थिंक आई आल्सो हैव अ वॉइस एंड नाउ आई हैव रीच्ड टू दोस पीपल जो मेरे से कभी भी बात नहीं करते थे एंड प्रेजेंटली आई आई आल्सो रनिंग है मेड दिस इज न्यू एक्सेसिबल कैंपेन इन दी न्यू थ्रू पिटीशन ऑन चेंज डॉट ओवर दिस रिवाइवल डिसेबिलिटी के ग्रुप पे like at midnight i would take that i am having this blinding pain in my feet can someone help and i would get responses to that and i felt hurt i found that really helpful that we can reach out to people we don't know who is sitting out there and might be feeling same vulnerable pain and sharing the same stories mere father se related jinko als था उनका डायग्नोसिस जैसे ही कोविड के थोड़े से महीनों पहले हुआ तो हमें एक्चुअली किसी ने बताया एक व्हाट्सएप सपोर्ट ग्रुप के बारे में वो एक जरिया बन गया था जीने का उसमें आइडेंटिटी भी मिली कम्युनिटी भी मिली सपोर्ट भी मिली और लोगों से सीखकर ही हम ध्यान रख पाए नहीं तो हम उतना भी नहीं कर पाते आई रियली लाइक टू हैंग आउट और लाइक wonder if you um kind of convert an offline space to an online space which is much more accessible and and livable for me uh one of the girls who we have placed in her fnc who can't move any part of her body she realized something was wrong with her mother and she actually uh you know used speech recognition and via facebook it was a very bizarre thing she actually contacted somebody in and in able india and said can you please come home a couple of people went and broke down the door and her mother had passed away technology is a lifeline you cannot imagine what it can do to person with disabilities we also asked what are your digital pain points share your top most five used apps platforms or digital spaces What are the accessibility pain points? How can interfaces also change? Our banks accessible to me, Jenny. Just say, but I like online banking. Come, who for me is a very, 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 enter something yes or whatever i think that leads to increase yeah. i'm very apprehensive about not wanting to make a mistake there and another thing is the embarrassment and shame of not being able to use something a blind person uh, navigates these apps using a screen reader and the and the navigation is sequential the screen reader is forced to read all of the content which makes it very bewildering for a user why you can read stuff but what you might read in one second i will probably read in one hour to play a game with my friends who don't have any disability i can't do that 
because oh. the game uh, visual is the screen is black. Nobody can see anything visually. So it's just who know how to use a screen reader. They can understand the accent in which the screen reader is speaking. Then they can play the game with me. Rural Sierra Leone, mobile apps, 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 but apps, desires, as to work access, ideas. So, language main. So, typing Accessibility is a big pain point. I'm talking about a physical disability here. Is the restaurant or the place that I'm going to accessible? You know, are there stairs? Is there a ramp? So a lot of times the onus, you know, is on me uh, to call that place or to find out. So I think, you know, Google Maps having something that would show the accessibility, the physical accessibility of a place would be extremely helpful. If you use the inbuilt in Windows speech to text, it will not work on banking apps. With accessibility, most people forget one is the structure of the app and whether that is accessible. But the other is the content that each and every one of us put in. Like when you do social media access audits, it talks about the structural audit, it never talks about content. Right. But the platform just being accessible is of no use to the end user. Sure. Accessibility is often a retrofit. It's not on the drawing board when the whole thing is starting. We are not conscious of the fact that visually impaired people would be using uh, the same uh, application or the same technology or the same software. I guess this applies to all disabilities, you know, whether they are being thought of as potential consumers of these products that are being created. And there are other barriers and pathways. We are not acknowledging how overwhelming and cluttered spaces these are. And while everybody is communicating, I don't think anybody is feeling seen and heard. I don't think we know what psychological safety looks like when we talk about digital safe spaces. And I don't think we have defined that psychological safety. Especially for like people with disabilities, like trans people, this idea of anonymity is also something because for a lot of us, especially for trans people and queer people, being anonymous gives like gives us like a certain sort of like agency and gives us like a certain a certain feeling of safety also. Anonymity has been a huge part of my own uh, exploration of the internet as a queer person and parts of my own sexuality and desire. A lot of these anonymous accounts approach me on my Instagram uh, where they're expressing desire essentially. You know, we all, I mean, the ones who have cars, you, you usually have this mobile traffic app. And if you put in my um, uh, number plate, you get all my details. So I went on a date and I usually don't give out my ID uh, identification. This guy thought that it was really suave of him to tell him that by the way I know your name and I'm like how? And he's like so because you got off your car and, and I uh, found out and I'm like That's what? That's creepy! To build better digital futures we need... Emacs is a software that allows you to do everything. Open source software is very, very powerful for people who are disabled because being open, you can add things to existing software and come up with something far more powerful. For people with disabilities, most of our decisions in India especially are made by our caregivers and we are not given the autonomy to kind of make decisions for our, our own bodies. When we think about bodily autonomy in digital spaces, that is how I think it's really revolutionizing where we can be the expert of our own bodies, where we can have our own uh, voice and we can uh, tell people that these, this is our right to bodily autonomy. Achieving full independence right. over the digital technologies that a person uses and how they want to use it. Basically, the idea is that a person, if uh, when achieving complete digital self-determination, mm -hmm. should be able to use their technology, mm -hmm. use it to do what they prefer to use it for, right. and use it in the way that they prefer right. to create the identity that they prefer.
In 2023, Point of View, Design Beko, Swissnex in India and the Embassy of Switzerland in India organized four studios on disability and digital self-determination in Delhi, Mumbai and Bangalore. Digital self-determination is a big word. So how to deconstruct it? What does it mean for a disabled person, uh, whether it's a visual impairment or hearing impairment or a locomotive impairment, to have agency in their digital life? We uh, explored the concept itself and tried to arrive at understandings of what self-determination could look like in digital spaces for persons with disabilities. So the whole point of these workshops is to um, inform technologists and designers what it means to be a person with disabilities navigating these digital spaces. 